Are you a fan of Destiny and Destiny 2? Do you want to see more Destiny style gameplay in the future? Do you play on mobile? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Destiny just announced their first mobile game that's coming out and uh, call me skeptical, but I don't think it's free to play the way that they're advertising it. Let's get into it. It is time to embrace your destiny. All right, so Destiny Rising was just announced as a Destiny spin-off mobile title, which is essentially going to take the Destiny franchise to the the Dark Ages, the before time, before the story of Destiny 1 and 2 that we know, and basically we're going to go back into the time of the Warlords and all that. Now, one of the things that people are saying is there's no way this looks like actual gameplay. If you've seen the trailer, I won't play it here, and eh, maybe I'll clip it and play a little bit of it here, but... They're offering something on mobile that seems very, very similar to what you would get on the console experience or even the PC experience for Destiny. Now, this is something very, very insane. Now, before we go any further than that, I will say this. I fully expect mobile gaming to essentially become the future, like, Game Boy, right? Or Nintendo Switch. Those would be the closest things that we have to that. Steam Deck, so so on and so forth. But essentially, a lot of developers are looking lately to try to do mobile versions of what they're doing because, well, the fact of the matter is, is just about everybody has a phone nowadays, and it would probably be financially dumb to not make a mobile game when you can tap into that market. When everybody has something, it's not like back in the day, like when we were kids where you had to go out and buy a Game Boy and the only thing that it did was play games. No, now everybody has one, even younger children. I'm seeing kids as young as like eight, nine, 10 years old have access to smartphones, which although I have my issues with that, everybody seems to have one nowadays. So what exactly is Destiny Rising, who is it being made by, and is it going to actually fulfill that little itch that people are going to have as Destiny 2 is winding down and Bungie is getting closer and closer and being more involved with our game Marathon? Well, let's go over here to Game Rant. And again, we're going over to Game Rant because they don't ask for my credit card information and they don't ask for me to sign up to get notifications with my email. So... Over here on Game Rant, the key takeaways that they put in this is Destiny Rising is a new mobile RPG shooter by NetEase. They basically contracted uh, out with Bungie in order to do this. The game features unique characters and abilities and offers alpha testing starting in November. All right, the gameplay is reminiscent of Destiny 2, but fans should expect typical mobile or typical monetiz ah, typical mobile monetization practices. Words, people, words. I don't know. I, I, I can't words. I... I practice this stuff before I get on camera and I can't words it on camera. I don't know. You make me nervous. Look away. Just close your eyes and listen. It makes me feel better. Anyway, a new experience, the world of Destiny 2 has officially been unveiled in the form of mobile game titled Destiny Rising, an RPG shooter developed by NetEase, which appears to take place in an alternate timeline within the Destiny universe. Fans have been aware of a rumored mobile Destiny game for months now, and while the reveal trailer does finally give fans a look at <clears throat> what to expect in terms of gameplay, there remains a plethora of questions surrounding the mobile exclusive title. And that's one of the things. Obviously, everybody remembers the Diablo, uh, what is it? Diablo Immortals mobile uh, uh, reveal, right? Do you guys not have phones? That was so great. That's such a great thing to say to people, especially when people are expecting a PC experience or even a console experience. Now, mobile gaming traditionally has been something where people play games like Angry Birds. I think Angry Birds was probably one of the, the earliest uh, memories that I have of a mobile game actually taking off. And to be honest, it was very good. But obviously, mobile gaming has one catch with it. If you want to continue to play this mobile game, you're not just going to drop the $60 one time or whatever, which and even Destiny doesn't do that to make sure that you can kind of keep up with everybody. Well, Destiny does actually. You drop the one time for the year, you get the game, you get the updates, you get the season passes. For the year, it's like 80 bucks, depending on how much they want to charge that year for what they're doing. And for the most part, cosmetics and, st cosmetics and stuff are where they make their money. But when it comes to a mobile game that they're offering free to play, so you download it, it's free to play. The question is, 
how much longer is it going to be? How much longer can you play until you have to start shelling out nickels and dimes and so much more in order to play this game? Now the question would be now with where Bungie has been recently, a lot of people are starting to lose faith in the company. They're starting to lose faith and wondering why Bungie would be doing the things that they're doing with Destiny. They obviously reached their, you know, pinnacle just recently with, you know, Lightfall and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with Lightfall and uh, the final shape. Thank you. Oh, so I knew I would get the name. Hey, I remembered the name this time. And it's one of those things that as well as the final shape did, it doesn't seem that Destiny had has any sort of through line, any storyline after that, which does make sense. They told us Epic Grand Story, took them 10 years to do it. There's still some questions that are open in the Destiny community. I follow actually um, a couple of Destiny channels now, a lot less than I used to. Now, my history with Destiny is my buddy asked me to play it for years and I eh, didn't get into it, but we got into it just before Witch Queen. Now, I got myself into it. My wife got into it. My daughter is even into Destiny now. And my wife and my daughter actually game together playing the game. And my wife had just told me recently that when Destiny 2 is done, she's like, that's going to be a day where she probably cries because she loves Destiny 2. She wishes that she would have got into it earlier and she wishes that she would have been able to experience all of that earlier. She loves Destiny 2. Now for me, Destiny 2, I played it like the story, but then you start to get into the grind period. And I'm like, eh, I don't really care especially when they release new updates and all of a sudden they just bring everybody's level up. It's like, well, if you're just going to bring my level up for an arbitrary price tag later, why should I sit there and grind? That was my experience with it. Now, that being said, I absolutely loved the gameplay for a while, but you know what? For me, it was like, eh, I can take it or leave it. It's not exactly something that I'm going to stick with for a long period of time. But there are people who've stuck with this game for 10 years, my buddy being one of them. My wife, who has been going on two and a half years now, loving this freaking game and not wanting it to end. And now with the big new announcement for Destiny, it's gonna go on mobile. And mobile does tend to have an issue. But you would say, okay, why would Destiny do this? Why would Bungie try to get into the mobile market? Like we're PC players, this makes us very skeptical, so on and so forth. Well, I would like to show you guys one more thing here, and that is over on the uh, the website. It is called Visual Capitalist. Now, this is the only place that I can find something that visualizes this, and hopefully it comes up on the screen well. But you can see here, and actually let me mess with the screen while I do this. Nope, that's not what I wanna grab. Let me go here and let me show you. So you can see throughout the years, as gaming has grown, it's gone from just arcade gaming into so many different platforms and what we notice here is and basically what this is is this is just an overall 165 billion dollars as of 2020 that gaming as a whole made and you can see right here at the end how much money mobile gaming makes that's because of all the microtransactions and all of the pay to win transactions that mobile has it's a very addictive game loop now, if Destiny decides to go full bore on the mobile gaming, they're going to get into the addictive game loop, right? You've got to pay to win. You're going to have to pay to continue to play because they're announcing this as a free mobile game. But I'm here to tell you right now, free mobile game just means that it's free to download, but it's going to cost you to win. And that's one of the biggest issues that I really have with mobile gaming is, you know what? If you're just going to charge me an upfront $60 or whatever to download a game and play that game and I have the exact same amount of access to somebody else, that's fine. I think that's cool. I think that's a totally fair price. And honestly, if they said, hey, we're doing Destiny Rising, but it's going to cost you $60 on a mobile experience, I think a lot of people would recoil. But they're saying, oh, it's free to play. We'll get you in the door for free. It's fine. But the fact of the matter is most mobile games, you can't play for free. And in fact, in order to be any sort of competitive, you have to pay to win. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people are really, really worried about here. It's like, why in the world would Bungie be doing this? Well, the fact of the matter is, is Sony's not really happy with the numbers that Bungie is coming up with, considering that they bought them for, what was it, $3.6 billion? And if you've been keeping up with the news about Bungie and Sony, Sony wasn't happy at all. And honestly, I think this, although 
probably being in the works before that whole transaction went out because something like this, a mobile game like this and the way that it looks, if it is actually like that on the mobile, that's gonna take a ton of money to do and it's gonna take years of work to do. It's not something that they just come up with and then three weeks later, bam, it's out. No, this is something that was probably in the works well before Sony bought Bungie. But Sony wanting to make their money back is probably gonna be like, you know what? Mobile gaming makes the most money out of all forms of gaming out there period bar none it has addictive game loops it has loot boxes which in some countries are now banned thank god but they're not banned in all countries but they do have a very very much a pay to win play style and that's something that i think that a lot of people really need to pay attention to here is that how is gaming going to go in the future now i did make the mention back in the first part of this that oh it's like the game boy but the game boy was i went i bought a game i put it in and I played it, very traditional, right? We all go out, we buy our games, we put them in the console, we put them on the PC, we put them in our Game Boys, we put them in our Game Boy Advance, which was the most advanced Game Boy that I had back in the day because gaming has always been kind of expensive uh, for me. But you also get the Nintendo Switch, you've got the Steam Deck, you buy a game, you put it on, you play it, you have some fun, and that's it, the cost isn't there. But when it comes to mobile gaming, you download it for free, and then you pay a dollar a day. $2 a day. Oh crap, I gotta get this other thing. I need it. Ah, well, it's only $5 for this thing. And eventually at the end of the year, you've probably spent $1,000 or more in some cases on a game that back in the day, you probably could have bought for 60 bucks. And it tricks you into these small transactions. Your brain gets hardwired to thinking, oh, if I just pay, it's just, it, it's just a couple bucks. Here you go. It's just a couple bucks. Here you go. And by doing that every day, every week, or even every month, these companies are starting to see how they can gouge gamers out of their hard-earned dollars by offering an experience that they used to offer for a flat fee. This is what worries me about the future of gaming and even about Destiny. If this is really the road that they're going to go down. Obviously, they're really kind of, it sounds like they're just kind of giving up on Destiny 2 and they're moving into Marathon. They're moving all of their resources into that and we really don't know a ton about that game. There's not a bunch that's come out. So to be perfectly honest, I don't know about Destiny Rising. I'm not a mobile gamer. I don't like that type of play. The only things that I really play on mobile, if I ever, oh God, when was the last time I played something on mobile, are games that are just easy. They're like bubble shooter or something very, very simple like that. Basically something to waste time while I'm sitting at the DMV bored out of my mind, but I only go to the DMV once a year. And so when I have to go to the DMV and sit down and wait for a while, well, maybe I download a mobile game and play it then. But to be perfectly honest, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying, they're not doing this for Destiny gamers. They're doing this to tap into that mobile market to make that mobile gaming money. And to be perfectly honest, it's not, exactly, I keep saying that, to be perfectly honest. How many times have I said that? Count that, let me know down below. God, I've said that way too many times. But they're trying to tap in to the mobile market so that way, they can do the nickel and dime method, nickel and dime players until they make their money back and even more so. And that's gonna be something that I don't think the Destiny community wants. And that's gonna be something that I feel like if more companies are going to continue to do because it is so profitable. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in to A Drink With Crazy. If you want to hear my thoughts on some other things, there's videos that popped up on the screen just a second ago. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.